You know the old saying, life flashes before your eyes just before you die? I think there's a little bit of truth in that, because once the true reality of the countdown, the true reality of the black train, the true reality of death, once it really comes, then all of your prior issues, and pettiness, and resentments, and fears, and anxieties, they all are revealed as mostly, mostly, a pointless waste of time. Live life like you're dying, because you are. From the day that you were born, you are dying. And that's the only reason why you were born. Do you love this gift of life? I do. The first thing economics teaches us is that there is no such thing as a free lunch. The only reason we have life is because people f***ing die. It's the only reason we're alive. Why do they build new computers? Because old computers wear down. Why do they build houses? Because houses fall apart. Why does anything exist that is made? Because everything wears out. This is creation cast by the shadow of entropy and decay. Why am I alive? Because my father is dead and my mother is dying. Why are you here? Because dozens and dozens of people who came before you are not here. The death rattle and the baby's cry are two sides of the same black, closed-eyed coins. And that's life. We know this. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just reminding you. Wake up every day saying, that's one less day. Wake up every morning saying, that's one less. You can invest your money and maybe your money will grow. You can invest in your health with the hope you will get more years of life. But every day is one less. One day in the rear view. The countdown has gone down by one. That's the big picture level at which you should approach life. Most people die without ever having really lived. Most people fade away without ever having burned bright. Most people are lowered into the ground without ever raising their eyes to the heavens. Unfortunately, masses and masses of people exist to be negative. Whatever happens, they oppose it. These people are everywhere. Everywhere. They're claustrophobic and they are paralytic. And whatever you do, whatever you come up with, whatever you pursue, they will oppose it. Having an identity gets you targeted. You're not allowed to disagree with anyone. The nail that sticks up gets hammered down. The tall poppy gets cut off. To manifest an identity, to manifest a personality, to manifest your own thoughts and your own opinions and your own mind, you get two lasers pointing directly at your forehead. And the snipers load and take aim. Identity is death. Existence is non-existence. Thoughts are rejection. Opinions are abandonment. To manifest yourself is to be murdered. The way to look at your life is that there are snipers, and you're hiding behind a wall. You can see the lasers above you. Do you really want to stand up and say, oh, what a beautiful morning? Other people will keep dragging you down behind that wall, because they see all those lasers. And they're real. Don't get me wrong, they're real. They see all the lasers, and you want to stick your damn full head up over the wall? Up over the trench in World War I? You just want to stand up and go, oh, what a beautiful morning? You just want to get up there and sing and dance? Don't do it, man. There are snipers, and you're going to get yourself killed. People are saving your life by pulling you down. They're keeping you safe. If you view this as a mark of hostility, then you're going to be stuck in this useless merry-go-round where you are just bickering with other people on garbage, non-issue topics. Trump or Biden? Exercise or sitting? Spend money or save money? Do this or do that? Doesn't matter. When people are disagreeing with you with just about everything, they're trying to save you from the snipers. It's an unconscious behaviour. It's not a pleasant behaviour, but you have to understand that they're acting to protect you from the snipers. It's not because they hate you. It's not because they're nags. They're just pointing out the ever-present danger. Throughout most parts of history, in most parts of the world, children are disassembled and remade into automata, run by the grim machinery of history. They walk around having succumbed to this machinery, with no free will in the present. If you want the ability to run up a flight of stairs, you have to exercise. And if you want to have free will, you have to climb out of the gruesome machinery of history that's disassembling you. Consequently, many people are now in a state of hypervigilance in that they're always looking for the danger. The danger is never gone. The danger is always present. 
If they think there are snipers above the wall, they won't stick their head up to find out, because if they're wrong, they're dead. So they just crawl around all their life, living in the dark, behind an ever-lowering wall. But once, just once, you stick your head up to see what's going on. And nothing happens. No shot comes. You're standing up and singing, Oh, what a beautiful morning! And nothing happens. The people around you are telling you to keep your head down, but you continue to stand up. You are now thinking for yourself. You're no longer being a people pleaser. You now realise that you'll never reach your greatest potential if you're trying to please all people. They've lived their entire life in terror of a bullet that didn't ever come. And that's really, really terrifying to people. Even though they see you standing safely with your head above the wall, they will continue to pull you down. Not because they're afraid that you'll be shot, but because they're afraid of looking back at their life of crawling behind a wall and realising that they could have stood up at any time. They've crawled behind that wall for nothing. Because they were so afraid of snipers, they became the sniper. Because they were so afraid of people being hurt, they hurt people themselves. The snipers were only in their head, but the snipers won. Many, many people climb into the grave before they fall into it. They believe that disaster will occur if they stick their head up. But the worst disaster is when they do stick their head up, after a life of not sticking their head up, and nothing happens. That's a moment of crisis. Are you going to spend your life crawling behind a lowering wall? Or will you stand up and live your life?